Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix and this is Vampire of the Sands. It's $5 on itch.io. You probably haven't heard of itch.io on this channel and neither had I up until this point. However, a dev reached out to me and asked to take a look at Vampire of the Sands, gave me a key for the game in exchange for some coverage. And that's why I'm covering the game at this point. Because again, I am a fan of roguelikes. But keep that in mind as I go into this game and try to go into the details behind it because this is a one-hit kill roguelike. That's a very difficult game to pull off. The thing is, is that there's a difference between difficulty and fairness. I think, unfortunately, with Vampire of the Sands, its difficult nature crosses the line into unfairness. And I think that's where a major problem exists. Now, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about by playing through the game. So, basic, basic movement. I can change in all eight directions. Can punch with the Q and W buttons. Now, each of my hands can have something different in it, for example. So, if I find an item, for example, I was hoping that it would actually give me an item at that point, but of course not. Um, if I find an item, I can put it in my hand and I can use it. Now, one of the things that the game taught, or, you know, brings to the attention is that it has 128, I think it's 128, different monsters, all with different AI patterns. To the most extent, I can say, yeah, they, there seems to be a very big variety, although it depends on the level at this point. Obviously, each level will have their own set of enemies. I'm going to go into exactly what I see in terms of the AI in question later on. Now, you'll also notice that in the top right hand corner of this screen, there's this glowing blue item here with the red sort of shaking text. Well, what is that? Well, those are souls. Souls are needed to keep yourself alive. It's the mechanic in this game in which it forces you to move. Ah, there we go. So the thing is, is that if you run out of souls, you will die. Let's see what I get. Find it. Okay, I got, got an item here. I'm gonna put it on my right hand. Be very hard to do a one-handed shield though, or spear. So the thing is, is that I gotta keep on searching for souls or keep on moving forward in order to make progress in the game. Here's where randomization can be a problem. You see, randomization is a good in roguelikes to keep things fresh and have variety, but there's a difference between randomization, true pure randomization, and randomization where it's weighted. Now, also, I just put on a cloak there. That will allow me to take an extra hit and also gives me ability I'm a little bit faster. Well, what do I mean by the, the weighted randomization? Well, the idea there is that the weighted randomization means that even though it is still random, your set of items that it, it could choose is weighted in a specific way so that maybe after a period of time, you are getting more souls more than anything else because the idea here is is that to give the player at least a chance to be use his skill rather than anything else rather than I don't know random is you know just luck the thing is is that if you don't do that if you just rely on pure randomness the player is gonna sit there and be like well wait a minute I I'm only sort of part of this game I'm only part of the solution in question it is going to really be based off of whether or not I I can, you know, the, the luck gods shine down on me. At a certain point, a player is going to say, well, that's unfair. A critical hit in a game can seem like, you know, a very unlucky situation. But if you deal, you can deal with it in cer certain circumstances. This kind of mechanic, not so much. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, now, let's take a look at what just happened there. Do you think I had a real good chance of beating that enemy? Probably not. Again, one of the major problems I also have with the game in question is the fact that enemies, usually in games like this with roguelikes, you have either an, a choice in terms of how you create your character, or you inherently have a speed advantage on your opponents. Now, certain opponents you may not, but for the general case, you will. There's a reason for that. The thing is, with a one-hit kill roguelike, you don't want to be in a situation where, like, you, you know, open a door and all of a sudden you're in trouble. 
the th thing is is that you should punish a player for making a mistake, not necessarily punish a player because he didn't react within an inhuman amount of time. And again, I think that's where this game fails. All right, I'm gonna go back to the main menu because I wanna show you something. Now, as you progress through the game, you get ruins. And you can fill out your little pad here in terms of what ruins that you put in there. Now, remember how I said about the randomization portion. So right now I start with a bunch of more souls because I put a bunch of ruins down here to give me another crystal at the start. So I actually start with nine more crystals more than normal. You, you noticed how I was, you know, struggling for crystals at one point. I can also block and I can throw a little bit faster. In fact, I can block. Cool. That should help me, right? Well, sort of. But... I don't know. The thing is, is that I felt like this game really made the bad choice in the one-hit kill portion. I think this game is more suited to a health bar because of the fact that the way the enemies are laid out, the way that the randomization is laid out, and in particular the souls mechanic, in, in conjunction with that. Again, with one-hit kill games, pushing the player along like you are can really be problematic because it forces you to move probably faster than you are ready to at times. Now the controls... The thing is is that I would love to play this game with a controller and see how, better, uh, how it controls better, but obviously there's no controller support. Um, mostly because of the eight direction, in particular with the attacking, is it feels like there's a little bit of a delay there which doesn't help the situation at all all right let's see i'm gonna take you out punch that take out those spawning points do do all right let's see if we can go down a little bit further here don't have a key oh boy those bees are really problematic now you see i thought i had hit him but apparently not now, you'll notice that I'm playing the same level over and over again. Now, if I go down these stairs, I can note that I can get to these certain portions. Like, I can use maybe use my scrap metal that I find, or gold it, through it. Well, let's go through a different level. Let's go through the silo entrance. All right. This seems interesting. Oh, hey, look. A sword. Cool. Uh, uh, okay, you are definitely... Um, okay, you guys, okay, hello, how you doing? You guys, you guys want to run away from me. All right. Well. All right, different AI. Okay, cool. I haven't dealt with that one yet, but let's try again. Let's, tr let's try a different one. Let's try the green side. Ooh, hey, look, that's a new weapon I haven't gotten before. Botas. All right, cool. Now, nope. that was a short level. The efforts. Oh, what the? Uh, okay. That's interesting. I don't know what's happening here. Okay, so they're controlling my movements. Yeah, controlling your movements in a game with a one-hit kill. See where the problem with the difficulty here is? You're starting to understand where the issue is because if you haven't, it's pretty plain to see. When you take control out of the player's hands, or put him in situations where he definitely hasn't dealt with it before, he's gonna feel like, why am I playing this? Like I've said before. And that's the key part of where I have a major problem with this game in. I love difficult games, don't get me wrong. I, I love games that challenge me. But I love games that challenge me in a way that I feel is reasonable. When I talk about Dark Souls, for example, or Bloodborne, for example, Bloodborne's a better one because I've actually played it. Bloodborne is a, a fair difficult game. Ga the enemies give you a chance to, to attack and defend. It punishes you for failure. It punishes you for not thinking about the situation or not reacting to a situation in a reasonable time frame. Here, I think it misses the point. It's punishing you for things that really you have no reason to have reacted to in a reasonable time frame or been able to react without some sort of 
leniency in terms of a mistake. And that's where this game, unfortunately, again, sort of hits the wall. Now, I would tell the developer, again, I would actually really consider a health bar on this. I think the game in question has some interesting elements to it, but you've added a lot of mechanics and not necessarily thought about how they all fit together, because they don't. The Souls mechanic and the one-hit kill mechanic don't go together, even though it looks like it on paper. The way that the game is programmed, it doesn't work very well. The thing is, is that you're pushing forward, you're having to push forward, but the one-hit kill means that you need to be conservative. Uh, the control scheme doesn't complement either of those because of the fact that your character is so much slower than everybody else. While I like the ruin system, that could maybe give me an advantage or disadvantage over portions, the fact of the matter is those are random too in terms of when they drop, and the thing is, if I don't get the right ones, that could be a bit of an issue. All right, this is Dragonic signing out. I hope you understand what I think of Vampire of the Sands, and I will see you all later. Hey, thanks for watching. If you have a chance, leave some feedback and comments below. If you liked the video, hit that like button. And if you want more content like this, hit that subscribe button. This is Dragonic signing off, hoping that gaming brings as much fun to you as it does for me.